This is, is what it means to be authentic? This is mommy's slaw. Yeah, that's my slaw. So often, to be authentic or authenticity means mm -hmm. to do like and be and move in ways that make you special, right? Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. So guess what? There are 7.7 .7 billion people on planet Earth, at Magnus, and no person is the same. We're all special. We're all different, right? Yeah. So, Alana, what are some of the things that make you different, make you unique? You like hugs? Yes, you do like hugs. What about you, Fiona? Snaggletooth. Yeah, you're snaggletooth. You're missing some teeth. Yeah. Those are some of the things that make us special. And also, like, our eyes. Magnus, can you touch your eyes? Can you touch your eyes? And our hair? And our skin and our teeth and our mouths? All these things that make us different, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to read a story real quick. And before we read our story, maybe we can get out some wiggles. Get your yeah, wiggles get out. out. Yep. So I'm going to move back so you can see me. And we'll move our bodies before we sit down and read our story, OK? Is that good? All right. So I'm going to move back so you can see me. And I'm going to get all the wiggles out, out of my body, OK? So maybe we start by moving our feet. Wake up our feet. Get those wiggles out. One second. Alana's running around to get out her wiggles. You want to help me get some wiggles out? And then maybe we shake our legs? Mama. Yes. Come on, Alana. Are you okay? And we're shaking out our legs. Ah. And then maybe we shake out our hips. We shake out our hips. Ah. And then maybe we shake our belly and our arms. Fiona, can you help us get up somewhere with us? Can you shake your arms? Or maybe we move our heads side to side. Maybe we wiggle our heart. Turn around. Y'all want to wiggle and get all our whole bodies out? Get all of our wiggles? Who do you, how do you like to get out your wiggles, Alana? Turn it around. All right. So we're going to find our seat in five. We find a comfortable seat so we can read our story. Four. Keep wiggling our bodies. Three. Two. And then find your seat. Find your seat. Beautiful. We're going to go ahead and get nice and comfy for our story. You know, we might actually have to slide up so they can kind of hear. So we're going to slide up and we're going to grab our unicorn book. Would you like yeah. to sit in my lap? And get I nice and comfy. Like Maybe Magnus, you find a seat in your grown-up's lap or next to her. Would you like to, are you ready to read our story? Okay. So we're going to read our story about a unicorn. All right, you ready? All right, so you ready, sis? This is what came our unicorn. Yes, this is our unicorn story. Are we all ready? Mommy? Mommy? Yes. Where is my um, unicorn? Your unicorn is behind us, I believe. Oh. Grab your unicorn before we read our story. Yes. Grab it. So and then maybe, Magnus, maybe you have your Bigfoot or your owl to uh, listen to the story with you? Yeah. All right, are we ready? Are we nice and comfy? We got all of our wiggles out? Mm -hmm. And if we get any more wiggles, we can just stand up and get those out, okay? Yeah? All right. So Bye. we'll go ahead and start our story. Let's see if we can move this light. So maybe you can see a little bit more. Uh, uh, Perfect. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So deep in the forest, uh oh, yeah. in, a ma oh. in a magical land, oh. lived a creature, uh oh. Hey, look, the creature is so different. Are we going to move the camera? Ah! All right, so you can see too? There we go. It was hard. She was hard to understand. She looked like a horse, but her color was bright. She had a horn on her head, and she sparkled with light. So what special creature are we talking about? Do you know what? Unicorn. A unicorn. So she had a horn, right? And it's lucky. Yeah. Okay. And she kind of looked like a horse, and she was really bright and colored. All right, let's turn the page. So this is about a unicorn. And I'll turn the camera again. Others would guess at what she could be. A horse, a deer, maybe a donkey. You want to see? She heard from others that at the zoo she could find perfect examples of animals of all kinds. So, Magnus, what kind of uh, animals do you see at the zoo? What about you, Alana? What kind of animals do we see at the zoo? Sloppy. We see sloths. Sometimes there's sloths at the zoo. And what else? Sloppy. What other giraffes. creatures? I've seen a giraffe. I've seen a meerkat. meerkat. What's a meerkat? 
where the meerkat is? Ah, uh, it's just like this fuzzy little mouse thing that lives underground. Remember the Lion King? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a meerkat in that. So she got to the zoo, and oh, how it shined. It was perfect and pretty. Everything was in line. Wow. You guys know the story by heart? Yes, we've read it a hundred times. Oh my goodness. This is mommy's book, Lumberstruck. I love it. Each animal posed and the creature snapped away. A glimpse of perfection posing each day. So they went to the zoo to see all of these beautiful and unique creatures. The, 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 the unicorn went to the zoo, right? Yeah, and but the zebra didn't. Hell yeah, we'll get there. Yeah. Everyone wanted to be something and <laughs> each went to see. The perfect idea of what a creature should be. So if you look really close, that's Hammerhead Shark, and he really wants to be a dolphin. Mommy, so he's taking pictures. And then there's Bigfoot. I can't see. You can't see? There we go. I'll go this way so you can see. And then there's Bigfoot pretending to be a lion. Magnus, do you see the Bigfoot there? See Bigfoot pretending to be a lion? Let's see your, let's see your Bigfoot, Magnus. Can you hold it up to the screen? <gasps> oh, and he's in the story too. That is so cool. Oh my goodness. And the lion. Jackie, you are a brilliant mother. <laughs> yeah, she got all of the lumberkins. You are all lumberkins. <laughs> okay, so yeah. unicorn, the yeah. unicorn was quite flattered when yeah. she heard a shout. Yeah. The zebras oh. called her over and wanted to hang out. So while well, well, Hammerhead found the dolphins, yeah. Bigfoot found the lion, but the zebras are the ones that call unicorn over. And she's super flattered. So she's super excited that the zebras want to hang out with her. <laughs> well, we'll hang out with them. She's the cool one. Yes, yes. You look kind of pretty, but what is that thing? We can help you cover it. And let's add a nose ring. So the zebras invited her over but they combed her mane over her special unicorn horn. Mama, you know what? I'm oh no. And then they they painted stripes over her shiny bright skin. Yeah, you see that? Yep. So now they look more like her, right? She couldn't believe it. <laughs> she was part of the group. She was a beautiful zebra. Her dreams had come true. So she was so excited to hang out with these cool zebras. She got to take pictures and have fun with them. And she fit in, right? Yeah. So, no. But as time carried on, it soon became clear. Her new friends, the zebras, were not what they appeared. They liked attention, but were not really nice. Unicorn could hang out but it came with a price. She couldn't be different. She had to be the same. Stripes and shiny hooves, horn covered by her maid. Unicorn started to wonder what she had done. She missed other creatures who were different and fun. So she could hang out, but now she doesn't get to have her shiny unicorn anymore. It's covered up still. Her skin isn't bright and shiny. It's covered in zebra stripes. And for her to keep hanging out with the zebras, she couldn't be nice or hang out with her friends that were different. How do you think Unicorn felt? I think Unicorn feels um, like she has to change herself in order, order to be accepted by the zebras. Is that right, Alana? That's exactly right. And they've decided to be together and run off. So that's OK. And they can be, and they can be authentic and run off. <laughs> yeah. So she did something brave and decided to step out from the zoo and the zebras, from all her self-doubt. It's a hard thing to do to stand on your own, to be strong and unique, but you are never alone. So we have friends and family, right, that can help us? Yeah. If we need help or if yeah. we feel sad and alone, so repeat after me these words that are true. 
to help you see that you are a unicorn too. Yay. So I am true to myself. I am true, I am true to, myself. to myself. I let my light shine. I let my light shine. I can be who I am. I, I can be who I am. That's for me to define. That's for me to define. Yes, and that is our story. Yay. So one of my favorite parts of this story is how Unicorn realized that hanging out with the zebras was not something that she wanted to do. Yeah. She did not find it fun that she had to be mean and different just to hang out with these people, well, these zebras. <laughs> <laughs> A little, a little of that came through. Sorry about that. To hang out with the zebras. So she decided to be brave and she decided that she didn't want to do this anymore and she wanted to go back to her friends who were different and unique. So maybe we could take a seat. So let's find a seat. So we're going to kind of move into like a yoga practice and kind of like go back over our story. All right. So I'm going to move back to my mat. And then maybe you need a minute to get all the wiggles out again, right? Because we've been sitting for a few minutes and there's wiggles that we need to get out. Yeah. Maybe we can find crisscross applesauce. Huh? Crisscross applesauce, so back on our mat. This way that you can sit on the right. Just a little, there you go. And maybe crisscross our legs and then find our hands on our belly and we can close our eyes if that feels good. And then take some deep breaths right there into our hands. And then as we breathe here with our hands on our belly or maybe our hands in our laps or maybe even our hands on our heart or however we're being in this moment right now. And we think back to our story about unicorn, right? And like what it means, that definition of authenticity, what it means to be unique and special and all the things that make us unique and special, right? What it means to be brave. Yeah. What it means to be a good friend. What it means to be a friend that someone that you can be proud of, right? So our story, you can open your eyes here, you can bring your hands down. And maybe get a couple more wiggles out. No, you're not going to jump down. And then we can come back to our story of the unicorn. And we're going to do a little yoga pose in the story again. So our, our book was about a unicorn, right? So we're going to come into unicorn pose. So to come into unicorn pose, we're just going to come to all fours, almost like a table. And then we're going to put one leg near the front of our body, bend into our knees. And then from here, we're gonna try to find our balance and reach up. And this is what we call a horse. And then we're kind of like move back and forth, almost like a galloping horse, right? Don't my mommy. A unicorn isn't a horse. A unicorn has a horn, a special horn, right? So maybe we can take our fingers and then give ourselves a unicorn horn, either a small one, a short one, or maybe even a long unicorn horn, right? That's what our story is about. Or maybe we just reach our arms up. Maybe your arms stay down and we move like that kind of horse. And then we gotta do the other side. So we're gonna pull that leg back and we're gonna put the other leg in front so we can do that unicorn pose on the other side. So take a moment and then like find your horse pose. Maybe you reach your arms up and like back and forth, almost like galloping like a horse, right? And then maybe we find our unicorn horn. So find your fingers, like right there on your forehead, either a short horn or maybe a long horn. Hey, Magnus, what sound does a horse make? Do you know? Do you know what sound a horse makes, Magnus? Those names are constrained. But this is a unicorn. I don't know if a unicorn makes a noise. Do you know if a unicorn would make a noise? I'm not sure what kind of noise a unicorn makes. So we have unicorn, right? And then she heard about all these creatures at the zoo that were perfect. So she went to the zoo to see what all these special creatures look like. And I'm assuming that Hammerhead Shark and Bigfoot went with her, right? And when they were there, 
name head dog. Sure, head shark wanted to be a dolphin. So can we pretend to be a dolphin as well? We can come into dolphin pose. Yeah. So to come into dolphin pose, we're gonna put our hands and our knees on the ground, just like we did before we came into horse. And I'm gonna take my glasses off so they don't fall off. And you're gonna tuck your toes under and you're gonna lift your hips into the air. All right, so make yourself into an upside down. Uh -huh. I'm not. Yeah, and to come into uh, dolphin pose, yeah. maybe you can just stay yeah. here. Maybe you can drop your arms. Yeah. So a dolphin has like that fin, right? And then what do we see dolphins do? We see them like jumping out of the water. So maybe you can like go forth as if you were diving into the ocean. Go back okay. and forth. Or maybe even your knees can come down if having your hips in the air is too much. So back and forth like a dolphin, right? And do we remember what Bigfoot was pretending to be? Bigfoot was pretending to be a lion. So let's come into lion pose. To come into lion pose, we can sit back on our feet or our legs, put our hands in our laps, and then open our mouths and stick our tongue out and roar. We go, ha, like a lion. Can you roar like a lion, Magnus? I'll have to unmute. Stick your tongue out. And what other creatures might we see at the zoo? So if we're walking around the zoo, what other creatures might we see? I heard Miss Madison uh, mention a giraffe, right? A giraffe. Yeah, so let's come into giraffe pose because that's something we'll see at the zoo. So come back down to that hand, those hands and knees. And I want you to press down through one hand and then reach the other hand up just like a long giraffe neck, right? A giraffe. Have your nice long giraffe neck. And what do giraffes eat? Does anybody know? I think they eat leaves. They do eat leaves. So you're going to take that top hand and kind of like pretend you're munching on some leaves out of a nice tall tree, right? So you got your nice long giraffe legs with your two legs and your one arm and your nice long giraffe neck. And pretend you're eating leaves out of a nice tall tree. Then we have to do the other side. So that hand's going to come down. And then you're going to reach the other hand up and find that nice long giraffe neck on the other side. And then you're going to pretend that you're eating leaves out of a nice tall tree. I wonder what leaves taste like. They're green. They probably taste like grass. Have you ever eaten grass? <laughs> As a child, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. Yes. Some people, maybe vegetables taste like grass sometimes. Blech. And then that hand's going to come down. And then who can give me another animal we might see at the zoo? Hmm. An elephant. Oh, an elephant. Let's see if I remember elephant pose. Hmm. I think I know. Let's see. I think I actually have it wrote down somewhere. And actually, we're going to, we're going to make an elephant pose up. So we're going <laughs> to, we're going to step a foot forward once again. This is going to be our elephant pose, okay? So you're going to step one foot forward. And you're going to put one hand down, probably the same uh, arm that you put the foot down. And you're going to reach that right arm up and kind of like make it a trunk, right? So we're going to reach the other hand forward and like pretend you're waving your long elephant trunk. Let's make this up. It's called creativity. <laughs> yep. And reaching forward and you're moving that long elephant trunk. And what, song, what sound does an elephant make? I don't think that's right. It's sounding like a horse, but we're going to go with it. It can move the elephant trunk. And then we're gonna move to the other side. Elephant pose on the other side. I'm just gonna turn a little bit. I'm gonna stick that other foot forward, bring my right hand down, and then lift the other arm up and move it like an elephant trunk. So they drink water, right? They drip, they dip down into their lakes and their ponds and they suck up water like a straw. And then they spray themselves, right? So as you reach the other arm up, maybe sprinkle your fingers as if you were shooting water out of them. Sprinkling yourself with water, like a shower, right? Just like an elephant. And then it's gonna come back down. And let's see, maybe one more type of animal we might see at the zoo. Tiger, lion. Tiger and lions are big. We did a lion already. What about, we might see a bear? Yeah, bears at the zoo. we see a bear. Yeah, so what about bear pose? So bear pose is one of my favorites. We're gonna come down to our bottoms. We're gonna grab our feet and I want you to give a nice big smile, adult friend, as you kick your feet into the air. Whoop! Maybe I can't do it either, but bear pose. And maybe rock oh. side to side. Maybe find a sense of play here. 
I'm pretty sure we see our kids do this all the time, right? They're always balancing on their sit bones, moving back and forth. This takes a lot. Find a sense of play, smile if you come out. And then what sound does a bear make? A bear kind of growls, right? Like, or what is one bear makes? I like what sound does your bear make? And then we can come down. All right, so unicorn at the zoo, she found the zebras called her over, right? So we're gonna find the zebras are kind of like horses. So we're gonna find that horse pose once again. So we're gonna bring a foot forward and then we're gonna reach our arms up. And we're gonna pretend this horse pose is actually zebra pose. And we're gonna move back and forth once again. So the zebras called her over because they wanted to hang out. And Unicorn was so excited that the zebras would want to hang out with her, right? Let's move to horse pose on the other side. You can come back down, then reach your arms up. So she went to go hang out with the zebras. And while she was there with the zebras, what did they do to her? They covered her beautiful horn with her name so you can see it. They covered her shiny, bright skin and stripes and gave her a nose ring so she would look exactly like them. And now Unicorn was no longer a unicorn. Unicorn was a zebra now. And that didn't necessarily seem like a bad thing. But while she was hanging out with the zebras, she realized that they weren't nice. They weren't very nice animals, right? They liked attention and they were kind of mean. And she decided that she didn't want to pay the price it took to hang out with them. She didn't want it to get attention. She didn't want to be mean to other people. She couldn't be different. She had to be the same. Unicorn wondered, Unicorn started to wonder what she had done. She missed other creatures who were different and fun. So she was sad. Can you show me a sad face? Sad. She really didn't want to hang out with the zebras. It didn't make her happy. So she did something brave and decided to step out from the zoo and the zebras, from all her self-doubt. So another one pose I like to do to remind me to be brave is warrior pose. So we're gonna come to standing and we're gonna step one foot forward. Doesn't matter which foot or which leg. And you're gonna bend into that leg and you're gonna reach your arms up for warrior one. Reminding ourselves to be brave like warriors. And as you sit here and reach your arms up and you have really strong legs, maybe we can take three deep breaths here. What does it mean to be brave? What does it mean to step out? Can you remember a time, remember a time that you need to be brave? Let's move to the other side. So we're gonna step that leg back. And then we're gonna step the other leg forward and bend into the knee. And then we're gonna reach our arms up. Warrior one on the other side. Coming back to what it means to be brave. Maybe we can take three strong breaths here. <sighs> Maybe the arms are strong. Maybe your legs are strong. Maybe your fingers and your hands are nice and right like shiny unicorn skin, right? And then we're gonna come out. Then what's next in our story? They say it's a hard thing to do to stand on your own. So what does it mean to be strong and stand on your own? So we're gonna come to mountain pose. So you can bring your legs together and bring your hearts, your hands together right here in the center of your chest, or maybe your hands can come here. Maybe we can close our eyes and stand nice and strong, like a mountain. And we take three breaths here, <sighs> inhaling, maybe feeling the belly get big. And then as you exhale, feel the ground underneath your feet. <sighs> what does it mean to stand on your own, to be brave? Sometimes it's scary and that's okay. Because even though we're sometimes we have to stand out on our own and it's scary and it can make us scared, just we can remember that we're like never alone, right? We have our friends and our family to help us along the way. And a pose I like to do when I'm reminding myself of this is tree pose. 
not only tree pose, but like double tree pose or supported tree pose. So I'm close to a wall. And then Magnus, you are close to your caregiver there, your grown up. So maybe you can practice standing on one leg and then holding on to your family, your friend or sibling as you come into tree pose. You can hold on to the wall or you can hold hands. You can close your eyes and maybe even breathe here. Remember, you can always reach out for help. You're never alone. And be kind of like being authentic means to say when you need help, ask for help. And then let's come to the other side. We can bring our other foot or other leg on top of the other one. And maybe we're still holding on to our grown up or the wall. Or maybe you can bring your hands together and you can grow your tree pose. And if it's more than one person in the room, maybe it can be a forest of trees, right? Because when you think about a forest, all the trees are together. Rarely ever do you see a tree standing by itself. It's always with others around it because they grow together, right? And then you come down and then maybe find that mountain pose once again. Or you can come maybe to an easy seat and bring your hands here. And as you remember, like an affirmation to be different, to be brave, to be a good friend. Maybe you can say this to yourself or repeat after me. I am true to myself. I am true to myself. I let my light shine. I let my light shine. I can be who I am. I can be who I am. That's for me to define. That's for me to define. Maybe we take one big breath here, one big belly breath here. One big belly breath, belly breath out. <sighs> What does it mean to be brave, to be a good friend? What does it mean to be authentic? And then maybe we open our eyes. And then I like to bring my hands right here as I take a seat. Give a big breath in. And to close out my yoga practice, I like to say either thank you and bow and go namaste. Close out my practice. And I say namaste to say hi or to acknowledge how special you are, how special I am, and how all those differences what makes us all special in the world, right? Yeah. yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. You are welcome. Oh my gosh, Tanisha, you're an amazing teacher. Amen. I try to be, so we still have one more story. I'm not sure how. Magnus is feeling, but I have one more story for us, no, if that's okay, like story. a resting story. We have Slumber Sloth here, and we moved around a lot, and Slumber Sloth, I like to use Slumber Sloth after I move around, and I get all my wiggles out, and it reminds me to rest, especially when dealing with all kinds of things, like naps, and parents, and blocks, and counting, all those things can be so frustrating, the world is so big, and tiring, right, and sometimes I have to grab slumber slaw to remember to, like, take a break, mm -hmm. right, so we can move into our slumber sloth story, just to rest after all that movement, because I'm a little hot, right, so let's see if I can find our slumber sloth, and when I get slumber sloth, I like to get really comfortable, so I might grab a pillow, in a blanket, or I might lay down on the floor or the couch to take a break. Let's see if I can find our slumber soft story. Magnus, do you want to take you want to take a little um, nap time? Oh, or not even a nap time. Maybe we just take a rest. A rest. Let's rest. Where is slumber sloth? Oh, and guess what? Slumber sloth is right here. Is the whole time. I'm gonna grab a blanket and a pillow. Yeah. And then I'm going to remember to take a break here. So I got me a little pillow against my bed and a blanket in my slumber sloth. And I'm also remembering that I can use slumber sloth whenever I'm feeling worried or anxious. And sometimes I grab slumber sloth like five or six times a day when my feelings get too big. So we have our book about slumber sloth here. And I want you to get nice and comfy. And I'll go ahead and read, okay? So slumber sloth, it's time for bed, or maybe rest, right? It's time for bed, you sleepy head. I know you think it's hard to do, but listen to my words and I will show you. 
Yeah, because sometimes I have trouble slowing down and taking a break too. It can be really hard when I've got all these things going on in my brain and I don't, I can't settle down. Now it's time to calm your mind. Relax your heart and head before bedtime. Listen to me counts. One, two, three. Breathe in and out on each number very slowly. So what I like to do is I like to take a big breath in and a big breath out and count to one. And then I do it again. Big breath in and a big breath out. And I say two to myself. And then big breath in and a big breath out. Three. And now it's time to shut your body down, starting at your feet, then up to your crown. So it's just like getting all the wiggles out. It helps if we get all the wiggles out of our body parts one at a time. So let's start all the way down at our feet. Notice your feet, your heels to your toes. Maybe you count your toes or wiggle your toes. You squeeze them tight, now let them go. And when I'm squeezing and letting go, I kind of think like, uh, we like popsicles in this house. So we might squeeze our popsicle toes and like make them really stiff and hard like a frozen popsicle. And then we like kind of slowly let them out as if we like left it outside all day. Notice how calm your feet now feel. Now let's do your legs. It's the same deal. You can squeeze your legs tight and then now let them go. Feel them melting like the snow. Guess what? I'm reading slumber sloth. Oh, yeah. Halfway there, it's time to breathe deep. Big breaths on my count. So we're going to do that one more time like we did earlier. We're going to take a big breath in. And as we breathe out, we're going to say to ourselves, oh, one. Because we can count to three. Counting to three is super easy. Deep breath in. Will your belly get big? Deep breath out. <sighs> We're going to say two. And last time, big breath in. Big breath out. <sighs> Three. And this is also good for if you just need to calm down, even if you don't need to take a rest or go to bed. Taking three deep breaths always makes me feel better. Now notice your shoulders, arms, and hands. Can you find your shoulders, arms, and hands and maybe give them a shape? Are they still wide awake? or ready for dreamland. Squeeze them tight. Now let them go. Feel them melting like the snow. So when I do my arms, shoulders, and hands, I like to give myself a big hug, a nice big squeeze, and then let them go. And I usually do that like two or three times. Your body feels heavy, melting into the bed. Or even if you're not laying down, maybe you just feel nice and soft and heavy in your seat. Now turn your attention to your sleepy head. Give a big smile, now let it go. Feel your cheeks melting like the snow. Let your thoughts drift out to sea and inner dreamland, my little sweet pea. Be in. So maybe give yourself a nice big yawn and a big stretch. Good job, Matt. Uh, and then maybe Ooh. you're ready to take on your day, or maybe you're ready to take a nap, right? <laughs> oh, Magnus, you really, you really did it, bud. Yeah, are you over there sleeping? <laughs> over He's there. Maggie, they're talking to you. They're talking to you. Jackie, you're a hero. <laughs> you did it. Well, thank you all. That was so much fun. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Tanisha, thank you so much. Thank you. Magnus, Magnus so can you come say thank, thank you? you? Thank you? Bye, sweet. Bye. Oh, my goodness. He's like, I'm drinking now. Thank you. <laughs> Worked up a sweat. <laughs> Worked up a sweat. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So much fun. Okay, bye. 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 Bye, Maggie.